Welcome back. Did you know that January is the most popular month of the year to change career? However, older professionals are still more fearful than millennials when it comes to making the big change. So how can you put your best foot forward when looking for a new job? Well, career expert Ronan Kennedy joins us now with some advice. Good morning, Ronan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. It's an absolute pleasure. Now, first of all, this is the time of year many people are going, new year, new me, I'm going to change things up. The jobs market over the last number of years has been very, very precarious, very uh, changeable for so many people. And if you do want to make that leap, I mean, what should you be looking at doing now? Well, I suppose the first thing for many people is, you know, over the last year or two, we've had a very uh, tough time. Some people have, uh, you know, maybe gone through a lot of changes in work different types of stresses through remote working and so on and so forth. So I suppose the first thing is if you feel that you've got any stresses or baggage or any things on your mind that you want to release, uh, I think it's really good to uh, start writing the, those things down to get them off your chest because when you uh, go to your next job, when you go to your next employer, you want to feel free, you want to feel light that you can uh, take on that new challenge with a, you know, uh, a free mind. So I suppose that's the first thing is to get anything off your chest that's uh, stressing you or holding you back. The next thing is to really um, start to create belief, uh, a strong belief that you've got a lot of value to add. And one of the ways you do that is by understanding your skills, your achievements, your key responsibilities, uh, proven abilities you have, the way you build relationships, and, and see how all of that comes together to show and demonstrate that you've got a lot of value add, to add to the next employer in the next um in the next company as you say so there, there's a couple of ways you, you you know i i think are really good to start as you say ron like the, the workplace has changed because a lot of people are working at home and you know, back in the day when we were all in an office or wherever, at your workplace, if you had a problem, you could just pop into the manager's office and have that conversation, air your grievance. But that's all changed now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's totally changed. So I suppose some people might feel that they're a little bit more um, isolated because of the re remote working situation. Yeah. Um, so, you know, companies are, are, I think, making a good effort to try and keep people involved. But I suppose those natural mentorship opportunities, you know, those informal chats you have and those mm. uh, bits of advice that you might get at the, you know, in the kitchen or at the water cooler, uh, those opportunities aren't there as naturally anymore. So we kind of have to make an effort to incorporate them in. But there's a huge amount that people get from uh, those conversations. It builds up the camaraderie and that's one of the things that really people enjoy about work. So trying to factor those in, I think, is really important as well. I suppose if, if it's time for a career change, like how do you know definitively that uh, something needs to change drastically in your life? Like we've all heard of burnout when it comes to jobs, but I've heard of a term recently that's bore, it's called bore out, that you're just not, you're not actually engaged enough and you're not giving enough to, to your career anymore to make it satisfying. Like when should you make the decision going, yeah, this, this I've had enough, it's time to move on? Yeah, uh, so great question. Uh, a lot of people would ask this. So I suppose... Firstly, you want to see, is there anything I can do in my current job to resolve it? Um, let's say you're, you're bored, right? The, the, the bore that you uh, mentioned. Uh, is there ways that you can make your work more interesting? Maybe you're looking for more variety on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe you want to work on a new and interesting project. Or maybe you just feel like you, you don't have the opportunity to grow enough. So um, I suppose having conversations with your colleagues or with your manager, with the company to figure out are there ways you can make your existing job better? Uh, and that might mean that you have to come to the table with some ideas and suggestions. Not many employers want to have an extra uh, challenge on their desk, like how do I make this person feel interested? So coming to them with some uh, ideas is, is usually really useful. Um, but look, I suppose you have to think about what your values are and what your top priorities are. If you feel you're not growing or you're not having uh, you know, an interesting and varied uh, work or you don't enjoy the people you work with, well, if they align with your top values, well, then that's a pretty good sign that you need to uh, leave. Um, and then after that, it's really just putting a plan in place so that you can make the right next move. We always want to be mindful that we don't just want to uh, move our problem from one area to another area, which is why I would always encourage people to try and solve whatever challenge you're having in the existing workplace before you go somewhere else, uh, uh, so far as possible, of course. So you've made your mind up then, you're deciding, you made the decision you're going to leave. There would obviously be procedures then that you have to follow before you leave your current job. Now, 
I'd imagine they'd vary from job to job, but there would be fairly standard procedures that you'd have to follow. You need to be aware of that, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a really good point. So I suppose you want to give your organisation enough time so they can uh, make appropriate plans to hire someone else. It's always nice to uh, offer to train or mentor uh, the, the next person as they come in so there's a seamless transition. Mm. Um, maybe if there's uh, tricks or rules of thumb or operating processes that have worked well for you, you write them down so there can be a, 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 nice, a nice smooth handover to the next person. Um, but also from your own personal point of view, you want to make sure that you've got the um, you know the next job set up and that you're ready to uh, to move over. Some people like to take a little bit of a, a break uh, between jobs, which I think these days is is a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. Tell me about CVs. How important are they now? I mean, I, I, sometimes I think they've gone like handing out the little paper bits and pieces. It's very old fashioned. But I mean, what are the tips that you can give to anybody who, who wants to make that first step? And are CVs still a very important first impression? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm glad you mentioned CVs, uh, you know, and are they still important? I think they're really important. Uh, I think they're crucial. And I think they're so important because when you have to go through the process of writing a CV, really what you're doing is you're going through the process of identifying what you have done, what's important for you and the value that you can bring. And you have to write that down in a really crystal clear way. So it gives you the opportunity to reflect on it yourself so that you can build up that belief and that confidence uh, and you know remove any sort of self-doubts that you might have. So even if no one looks at it, it's the same with the cover letter, even if no one even reads it, it's still really important that you do because it's important for you to know. Um, after that, I, I suppose, yeah, people are using other ways to find jobs these days. They're using LinkedIn, they're using their network. Um, but I, I still think having it uh, written down really clearly is very important. So like, I would encourage people to, uh, when they're putting together their CV, to break it down into to parts. Like some people would struggle with like uh, phrasing sentences. But if you use a simple construction like, you know, what, how, why, you know, what did you do? How did you do it? And why did you do it that way? Um, you'll, you'll kind of put the sentences, sentences together with some nice detail. After that, like it's really important that you be specific. So instead of talking about just a variety of projects, you could talk about, you know, IT transformation projects. It gives it a little bit more flair, a little bit more color to it. And if you can, uh, to put in metrics or, you know, to quantify what you've done in some way, really uh, adds a bit of weight because if we know the numbers behind what you've done, we can really see uh, the value that you've brought to an organization. Can I ask you about online interviews now? Because we all know face to face meeting somebody is so important. Uh, after I think seven seconds, you form an impression of somebody. But if you don't have that one on one contact when you're interviewing for a job, I mean, if it's remote now and you're doing a, an interview like we are with you now, there can be quite challenging. What mm. tips do you have for that? Yeah, absolutely. It can be very challenging. So I suppose the first thing is get your get your setup right. Um, personally, I like to have the, the 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 view that you have when you're sitting across the table from someone, which is just you know the upper half of your body. It seems uh, more more natural for me. Uh, obviously, you want to have a, a backup. So if you've got like uh, your phone ready, so sometimes uh, when I'm speaking with clients, the audio quality might not be very good. So we just call on the phone and we keep the video going. It just means it's a seamless experience and we're not uh, tricking around with the apps and so on. Um, after that, I think there's a, a, a tendency for it to be a little bit more formal, but, but there's no reason why we, we still can't have a little bit of small talk uh, at the start to, to break the ice uh, before we get into the formal proceedings. So I, I think, you know, having a bit of small talk, a bit of chat uh, is good because at the end of the day, everyone wants to uh, connect in the interview. That's really what it's about. I think when people have a lot of questions that they're trying to figure out the answers to, those, those answers are really important, but also in an interview, we're really just trying to get a sense of the person. So I always uh, try to, uh, you know, convey that to clients, you know, you, they really just want to get a sense of you. Um, I suppose one of the things I would, I would encourage people to steer clear of is reading scripts on the screen. Uh, I know some people think, well, you know, this is actually going to be an advantage for me that I can just have it up there and I can read it off. But, you know, what sort of sense or what sort of impression you think someone's get, going to get from you if they feel that you're reading off the screen or it's a bit uh, robotic. Um, so I'd encourage you to just know what you want to say as best as possible and then say it even if it's not perfect because I think you're going to give a better account of yourself and uh, build better rapport and relationship with the interviewers.
Absolutely, and it sounds more natural as well, even if you made the attempt to try and learn off a little piece or a speech. Ronan, <laughs> listen, yeah. great advice as always. Thank you very much and a happy new year to you. Thanks so much, happy new year. Now, coming up, we meet the vegan stars of social media and find out how to go plant-based this January. Don't go anywhere.